very good morning to you all or good morning as I usually say <laughs> sometimes I feel like I shouldn't change things around but anyways here I am at the Walmart in Gallup New Mexico remember that song that can call you feet it. turn right onto Kachina Street Kachina Street um, anyway we're going we're driving to the east today and uh, the destination is Amarillo, Texas. Take the next right onto Kachina Street, then turn left onto West Melody Avenue. I intend to stay at a Harvest Host uh, location there, uh, but we're gonna try to see a few things along the way. And uh, take the next left onto West Melody Avenue. And I feel kind of like the, the mood of the trip starts to change. This is like the pivoting point where I'm like making a beeline, kind uh -huh. of, towards uh, Florida. We're not going to be in the Wild West anymore. In half a mile, turn right onto US 491 South. We're going to take the interstate instead of blue highways. And I'm sorry, I haven't been showing you much day-to-day uh, -day life, but, you know, Robert makes coffee, Robert cooks. And uh, I have, my cooking has been a little bit utilitarian in the past uh, couple of days. In a half mile, turn right on US 666. US oh, Cracker Barrel. Hmm, I could have had breakfast the there. entrance to the right at 950 feet. But the sun's out, and that always uh, makes me happy. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. We are going east on I-40, which nowadays runs mostly over what used to be historic Route 66. Around this area, it is a fairly scenic yet uneventful drive. Occasionally, we do encounter some attractions bearing the Route 66 name, as if to evoke a sense of nostalgia for what used to be called the Mother Road, and obviously to attract travelers. Well, 30 minutes from Albuquerque, and uh, there's a bunch of signs all over this road for Route 66, this and that, but uh, I'm not gonna explore this part. If you recall, I did this part at night the last time I was here, last year, about the, this same time, a little probably a week earlier in the year. And um, but I don't really want to stop much until the uh, Amarillo. There it is, downtown Albuquerque and the Sandia Mountains. Very nice, this Flying J has all these uh, RV specific parking spaces. We're just outside uh, Albuquerque. Uh, how cool is that? I'm parked right next to the Breaking Bad RV. Let's get off the interstate and continue on historic Route 66 for a few miles here in Santa Rosa. In typical Route 66 fashion, many places look abandoned or at least very run down. Let's check out the Blue Hole. And I think I just made a wrong turn. I always get myself into these kind of situations when I'm on Route 66. After all that, I found out that this is not the blue hole. I'm at the wrong place. Now we're at the right place. This here is the famous blue hole. Let's check it out. The blue hole here is one of seven sister lakes formed by the Santa Rosa sink. The water remains at a constant temperature of 62 degrees Fahrenheit year-round and I was kind of tempted to jump in, but no. It looks like someone else did.
they have an antique car museum here, but as run down as everything is around here, I don't really know if I want to go in, and if you've been following me for a while, you know I'm kind of into antique cars, but for now, let's continue. There's a long road ahead with lots to see. We are approaching the small city of Tuckumcary, which, at first sight, just looks like another decaying Route 66 town, forgotten by time. You can tell they are kind of trying to keep the town alive, and they have some attractions like a dinosaur museum, but first impressions count and uh, I don't know how well it's really working out for them. Sadly, it seems like most of these historic Route 66 towns are fighting an uphill, futile battle against time. I don't know, I'm starting to find Route 66 kind of depressing. We're back on I-40, and soon after, we are leaving the land of enchantment, New Mexico, and entering the Lone Star State once again. Lots of wind power and cows. Lots of cows. I have to remember to have my Texas steak before leaving the state. Check it out! The Cadillac Ranch! Tonight we are staying at a Harvest Hosts location called Bar Z Winery. And it is Friday, so I'm going to do my customary live stream tonight. This is where I'm staying tonight, at the Bar Z Winery. Right here on the, on the Palo Duro Canyon near uh, Amarillo, Texas. And we're about to witness a beautiful sunset here. And I think I'm gonna do the, that live video now. Well, hello everybody and welcome to another RV chat live here coming to you today from Amarillo, Texas. And uh, today we're not having an IPA, we're having some Tempranillo wine from here from Texas. It got so cold and, uh, and dark outside that I decided to move the show indoors. Okay, this is weird. My computer is still on Pacific time. My Fitbit is still on, on, uh, on uh, mountain time. Yeah, it's 7.20 here. It's probably like 4.20 in, in, in Hawaii, so it's 4.20 somewhere always, right? I'm riding, riding in my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. Good night, everybody. See you next Friday. Probably still from the road. Maybe I'll be in Alabama or in Georgia or somewhere around there. Good morning from the Palo Duro Canyon in Amarillo, Texas. It is 25 degrees Fahrenheit, and my app says it feels like 12. It's not that bad. No, everything's full of ice, but not much. Here's the, the back of the winery. Yesterday I forgot to show you inside because I was doing that live video and then it got dark and then This is the, the back of the property, it faces the canyon. As I mentioned, this was a harvest host location, and this one even has electrical hookups. I really enjoy staying at places like this one. There's a little trail here that goes to the top of, the, of that little hill. I guess from there we can see the canyon. Oh yeah, pretty cool view from up here. Very nice property, indeed. I wish I would have arrived earlier, actually. Nice winery. If you are in the Amarillo, Texas area, I recommend it. There, that's kind of what it looks like inside. So, you know, it's incredibly cold out here, so I'm going to uh, 
get everything ready. Today we're going to Oklahoma City. To add, uh, add another state to the map. Well, it certainly feels like I am the only person RVing uh, this time of the year, so... Um... First, we are going to see a couple of things here in Amarillo, and then we continue relentlessly towards Oklahoma. Let's get some propane here at Home Depot. One of my tanks actually ran out in the middle of the night. Well, got propane, which was one of my main concerns with the low temperatures around here. And, um, and now we're gonna see the Cadillac Ranch. It was created as an art installation back in 1974 designed to illustrate the evolution of the tail fins design from 1949 to 1963. And nowadays visitors are encouraged to use spray paint to modify this work of art as they see fit. Well, it's too cold, so I'm not gonna say much. This is the Cadillac Ranch here in Amarillo, Texas. Many pounds of spray paint on all these uh, cars and contrary to tradition, I am not going to spray anything because I forgot to buy spray paint. It's a very cold, windy morning here in Amarillo. It's, uh, it's uh, probably 30 degrees and pretty high winds. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fly the drone, which is what I really wanted to do. But anyways, here it is, the Cadillac Ranch, a famous, world famous. As you can see, it's many, many layers of paint. This Cadillac skeletons, whatever's left of this uh, old Cadillac, they don't even look like Cadillacs. They, they, they could be any other car for all we know, right? Well, the fins kind of give them away, but you know what I mean. The Cadillac Ranch was originally located two miles east of here, but it got relocated to its current location in 1997 to place it further away from the growing city of Amarillo. I've seen this place mentioned so many times on social media and videos that I really wanted to see it in person, even if this time I don't get to contribute to the ever-evolving work of art that it is. Although, let me tell you, a free My RV sign would have looked great, now that I think about it. The other famous landmark here in Amarillo is the Big Texan Steak Ranch, home of the free 72-ounce steak dinner, and they do have truck and RV parking in the back. The idea is that if you can eat the 72-ounce steak dinner in an hour, it is free. I am parked here in the back with all the trucks, and they have a motel for humans, and a hotel for horses, a brewery, and a bunch of other stuff. I think I'm going to sit at the bar. Very, very cool place. They even have a shooting range. I'm not that hungry, so I'm just gonna have the 9-ounce rebuy from the lunch section. Whoop your donkey, IPA. And this is the chili with cheese and onions. Mmm. Mmm. Smells good. Mashed potatoes, bread, butter. Pretty good. Oh, I got one of these. There we are, in the big chair. <laughs> Some of this is a bit creepy, but okay. Come, let Zoltar tell you more. Remember the movie Big with Tom Hanks? The famous 72 ounce steak that you can. 
That's the steak that you can have for free if you can eat it. Yeah, big Texan here totally lives up to the hype. Very good steak. Very good IPA, actually. I got me a, a half gallon for later. And, uh, well, now we continue driving east towards Oklahoma. Yeah, that was one of the best uh, pieces of cow I've ever eaten. Sorry, sorry cow. About 40 miles east of Amarillo, near the town of Groom, Texas, there's this ginormous cross. And we're gonna go see it next. It is called the Cross of Our Lord Jesus Christ Ministries. And all around the main cross, they have 14 stations illustrating the passion of the Christ. From being condemned, to carrying the cross, to falling for the first time, meeting his mother Mary, Simon helping Jesus. Well, you get the idea. It is actually very well made, as they depict the moving biblical story we're all familiar with. They do have a chapel and a gift shop where they sell all kinds of religious paraphernalia. I don't mean to put it down, but it feels a little touristy. Groom, Texas, historic Route 66. It is not the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It is the Leaning Tower of Texas, which is nothing but another clever tourist trap. Driving to the east. Our next stop, Shamrock, Texas, for more Route 66 fun. Famous Conoco Station. This is one of the quintessential Route 66 landmarks. The Art Deco Tower Station, built in 1936. Unfortunately, not open today. Being a Saturday, you would think it would be a busy day for a touristy landmark like this one, but I guess not. I like how the inside is decorated as it would have looked in the 1950s perhaps, before the slow decline. The original business as a diner and a gas station finally closed its doors in the mid-90s. Cool, they even have an old Studebaker pickup truck parked in this bay here. Here's the visitor information center. It's only open Monday through Friday, apparently. And today is Saturday. Well, I could have bought a souvenir. This is the U Drop Inn. This 
is no longer a working cafe, it's a historic building in the National Registry of Historic Places. Oh, there you go. Frozen in time. Pretty cool to have Tesla chargers. <laughs> For the modern times. Yeah, I hear vinyl is back in fashion. Not a whole lot else to do here in Shamrock, so let's continue. Oklahoma awaits. Oh wait, there's one more thing. This is that famous the other famous thing here, the Magnolia gas station. Well, let's just go look through the glass real quick. I mean, it's a historic gas station. Yeah, all these places eventually went out of business when Interstate 40 bypassed all these small towns. From 1929. They've kept it as it looked in 1929. Let's continue. Oh, oh wait, the tower seems to be historic too. Tower Plaza, Shamrock. That's a Shamrock water tower and here they have this uh, mural. Welcome to Shamrock. Well, we saw two of the main landmarks here. Three, actually, if we count the tower. There's actually quite a bit to see here in Shamrock. By the way, in a little better shape compared to other Route 66 towns we've visited. They even have a radio shack. And we are back on I-40, the main reason all this ceased to exist. And we are now in Oklahoma, for the first time actually. Here in Elk City, they have the National Route 66 Museum, but I'm tired. I just want to get to our destination. Oklahoma City is somewhere back there, believe me. Tomorrow we are going to go out and explore, but that will be on the next video. It is unbelievably cold here in February, and we're going to be staying at the Oklahoma City East KOA holiday. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Too long